Good day to you and welcome to this webinar that is part of the IDF webinars on managing calves from birth to weaning in different parts of the world. My name is Julio Django. I am a senior scientist at the International Livestock Research Institute based in Nairobi, Kenya. In the work I do, we seek to identify appropriate breeds and breed combinations for livestock production systems in middle and low income countries in order to improve animal productivity and improve incomes for the millions of people who depend on livestock for their livelihoods. In this webinar, prepared in combination with other members of the livestock genetics team at ILRI, I will share information on smallholder farming systems in Eastern Africa. The title of our presentation is Raising Calves, a Strategic Investment for Smallholder Farmers in East Africa. Why is this strategic? The continent of Africa is estimated to have 1.3 billion people. About one-fifth of this population lives on less than $2 per day, yet Africa hosts more than 20% of the world's cattle. In spite of the huge cattle population, Africa produces less than 6% of the global milk from cattle. 80% of the milk produced in Africa is by smallholder farmers. It is interesting to note that 43% of the agricultural workforce in Africa is female. There is a huge gap in productivity by dairy animals depending on the farming system in which they are raised as is illustrated in the chart for the East Africa region. You note dairy cattle raised by the majority of smallholder farmers produce less than 2,000 kilograms of milk in an annual lactation. Yet, within the same environment, large-scale producers are able to produce up to 6,500 kilograms per lactation from the same type of animals. What is the nature of dairy production in the smallholder farms? Typically, smallholder farms are 0.5 to 5 acres in size. The farmers engage in both crop and livestock enterprises. They generally own two to five dairy cattle. One or two of the animals will usually be in milk while the rest of the herd is comprised of animals of mixed age and sex categories. The cattle are raised under different management conditions depending on their age and physiological status. Mature milking animals are often kept in barns or stalls, while younger animals are left to graze in the fields on residues from crops or by the roadsides. Animals put to graze by the roadside are tethered to a fixed pole or tree using a length of rope to ensure that they do not stray. The animals in stalls have limited space for movement and are provided with feed and water by the farmer. These systems are referred to as the cut and carry or zero grazing production systems. The animals reared for dairy production have a high proportion of exotic genotype, that is the Holston Frisian, Ashai, Jersey, or Brown Swiss blood types. However, the milk productivity tends to be much lower than that of the same breeds in some of the more developed countries. 
Though the milk production per animal is less than 12 liters per day from two milkings in the smallholder systems, the dairy cows are a critical source of daily income for the farmers. The newborn calf is generally left with its mother for the first week of its life, that is three to seven days, in a field or enclosure that is well sheltered from strong winds. During this time, the calf is allowed to suckle at any time. At the same time, the cow is hand milked twice a day, in the morning and in the evening in order to enhance milk letdown. Cows in smallholder systems are milked by hand, as most farmers do not have milking machines. The milk extracted by the milker is given to the calf using a bucket from the third day of its life. As the calf is taught to feed from a bucket in addition to suckling from its mother. In this way, the colostrum from the cow is all provided for the calf. After the first week, milk produced is used both by the calf and the farm household. Excess milk is sold to generate an income. At the end of the first week, the calf is also separated from its mother and is housed in a shed that protects it from extreme cold or heat, while the mother is left to graze or feed in a nearby stall or paddock. In the first month following calving, farmers pay critical attention to the calves. They ensure the calves are provided with sufficient milk and take time to bond with the calf so that it is used to human contact. As cows are hand milked, in some instances, the calf is permitted to suckle from its mother in order to help stimulate milk let down at the times of milking. Once milk is flowing freely, the calf is removed and the handler continues to milk the cow. At the end of the milking session, the calf is again permitted to suckle the mother and extract any remaining milk. This practice is used to prevent incidences of mastitis due to incomplete milking by the handler. A measured portion of the extracted milk is provided to the growing calf using a bucket. After the first month of its life, the calf is moved to a further distance from the cow and suckling is discouraged. Milk for the calf is fully provided using a bucket. The farmers thus control the amount of milk that is provided for their calves depending on the age of the calf. The common practice is for milk to be provided such that in the first month, the calf is given up to six liters of milk each day, divided into three feeding times, in the morning, at midday, and in the evening. In the second month, Milk for the calf is gradually reduced to 4 liters per day, divided into two feeding times, in the morning and in the evening. At this stage, the calves are also exposed to good quality, fresh forage to begin to stimulate the rumen and are provided with some quantity of clean water and mineral lick. Farmers with more resources also provide calf starter pellets for their calves. In the third month, the milk provided for the calf is gradually reduced to two liters per day. And in the fourth month, the calves are fully weaned off milk 
and are provided with green forage, in addition to being left to graze on crop residues. In the first two months of their lives, calves are normally housed in raised pens. This is to ensure that they are protected from external parasites that are often found in open fields. The calf pen is washed with the caricides twice a week to prevent infestation with ticks and to protect the calves against different diseases. The calves are also washed with a gentle pyrethrin-based acaricide. Male calves are usually castrated soon after birth if they are not earmarked for breeding. There are often several challenges that are experienced when raising calves within the smallholder systems. One of the main challenges is underfeeding of the calves due to competition for milk between the farmer household and the calf. In some instances, the herders dilute the milk provided to the calves with too much water. This results in water poisoning. Diarrhea in calves is also a common challenge as the feeding containers may not have been well cleaned. Farmers are encouraged to use disinfectants and the strong sunlight to help ensure that the containers are clean and dry prior to putting the milk in for the calves. When environmental conditions are cold, the calves sometimes contact pneumonia because of the drafts and the sudden changes in weather. It is important that the farmers provide adequate housing for the calves in this early stage of their lives. To encourage improved dairy production, livestock extension service providers normally visit the smallholder farmers. There are also several training courses for smallholder farmers on proper management of calves provided by both national and development partners. With the COVID pandemic in 2020, it has been a challenge to access the smallholder farmers. The Ilri Livestock Genetics team developed and availed mobile phone-based extension materials using different web applications that are freely available to the smallholder farmers following a simple online registration process. The training content is turned into fun, interactive lessons and quizzes to help guide the farmers and also to encourage younger household members to take an interest in managing the animals. The tools are available in the main languages used in East Africa. Currently, there are four courses available for the users. You are welcome to ask any questions on the information shared in this webinar. Thank you for your attention.